let's MCP enable uh, Ignition. So we're going to expose Ignition data to Agentic AI. Now Ignition does not have an MCP server yet. I'm very confident they will at some point. I think every software vendor is going to have it. MCP is the technology by which you expose your product, your data, your configuration, your troubleshooting to Agentic AI and ultimately through the agents LLMs, right? So it's how you use agents on data uh, from the real world. So in this demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to MCP enable Ignition data. So I'm going to basically build an MCP server for Ignition using data ops and show you that. Um, I think every vendor is going to add it. And also MCP as a technology is not that hard um, to create and adopt. It's fairly simple. So I think you'll see rapid adoption for those, those two regions. Super useful, not that hard. It's going to flood the market. Um, I am going to show you and specifically in the industry why it's really important to own your tools, which tools are what uh, the agent can call to get data and tool definitions. So we're going to define some simple tools. I'm not going to go through a bunch of the setup of this demo because I have committed to, and there's no data out yet, but we're going to teach a one day workshop on setting up your environment, including LLM, agent, MCP, to be able to test this on your own. Because I think it's really important as, as the, the industry tries to get come up to speed with this to have an environment in which you can play with because it is a very playful technology um, and you need to get your hands dirty. Okay, without further ado, so we are going to. I don't have Ignition 8.3. I just installed Ignition 8.3. This is going to use the old Ignition. Uh, in the future, we'll, it's in beta, right? So it's still brand new. But in the future, we'll, we'll support 8.3. We're really excited about that release. A lot of cool stuff in there from Ignition. OK, so I do have HiBite installed. Uh, I have it running in Docker. The one thing you're going to do is sign up for the free trial, two-hour repeating trial. You're going to want to download either the Docker or the desktop version to get HiBite running. We have content on how to do that. And then you'll want to download the Ignition module. Uh, for the ignition module, once you download that, if you're not familiar, and there's there's content on that as well in the knowledge base. Oh, let's reset the trial. Uh, you go to config modules, install it down here. You'll see development here for me because I'm in a development environment. You won't have that, but you'll have the high byte module up and running, and you're good to go. Um, the other piece briefly for this is uh, we have sample projects up in our GitHub repo, so high byte sample projects in there you'll see the 4.2 webinar. And if you click on that, there's a config JSON that is the config JSON I'm using as part of this demo. So you can literally just copy that out. Um, let's see, go into the project, import full project in JSON format, paste that here, and you'll be able to follow along. You will need to rewire your connections for your environment, but you'll have the pipelines and everything that I'm doing. The last thing you want to do before we get started is just turn on MCP. So to do that, go to settings because it's not on by default. You want to turn on the REST data server and then the MCP server, and this is the port, and we'll exercise this in the MCP client, um, so you'll see. So you got that, you, you're, uh, you're good to go. Uh, so for connections, I have a connection to Ignition. This is the one we're going to focus on. You'll see this weird IP because Hibite's running in Docker, and I'm connected back to my host, uh, the port, and then I put in my password that I set on the Ignition side. And then I really only have two inputs. I have a browse input that's browsing the default namespace. And if I pull up Designer, You'll see this is what my default namespace is with a bunch of simulated data in there. You test read that. And then the other one I have is a read that takes takes a parameter that is the path. So you'll see when I go design my tool for the agent, I'm restricting the agent to the default path by hard coding that here. Then the agent has access to anything in that path that it can browse and find. OK. So in Hibite, tools are pipelines. So you can create a pipeline that represents an MCP tool or a method the agent can call to access data. In this case, I have three of them. We'll start at the top. So we'll start with browse. So the agent needs to know what data is available in Ignition, right? So this is a browse tool. You know, browse the factory machines. I have a very minimal description. This is actually prompt engineering on the agent side. Then you know, it figures out how to call this tool. So you probably want this to be more verbose as you design tools. But in my case, I'm just going to keep it simple because I'm a little, I'm a little lazy. To make this act or expose this over the MCP server, you need to add an API trigger. So that's what I've done here already. I'm just showing you where to drag that from. And you need to enable it. Now that this means that this is now exposed as a tool over MCP. So I've enabled it. Uh, and then after that, it's just it runs through this ETL function, whatever I decide to do, read, write, transform. And to see that, what we'll do is we'll put the pipeline in debug mode. We'll run it and we'll just go step by step with what happened. So the request enters. The first thing we do is we go browse ignition. So we're going to go read ignition and pull in the address space. 
I have a little bit of cleanup where I wrote a little uh, method that's removing the underscore, the metadata that's in there that I, I don't care about. And then what I've done is I formatted the hierarchy in the format of just an array. So I just want to pass the agent in its context window. I want to pass it an array of flat lists of all the paths that it can read. Right? And I just return that. So this is exactly what the agent will see. So now I go to MCP Inspector. And again, I'm not going to go through the setup of this. That'll, that'll happen in the class and the content we produce as a result of that. Um, I'm going to start over and just hide this window and reconnect. And you'll see if I list my tools, these are all the tools that I have enabled inside of Hibite and built. And we'll just do the browse one, run it. And you can see we'll just copy this path. So that's exactly what we saw in debug mode. We see now an MCP inspector. This is exactly what the agent will see when it calls this tool. All right, next up is the read. So the read is even simpler. It just takes a path parameter. So it's going to read a single path at a time. We could change that, right? We could make that do many paths at a time especially with a looping feature we're adding in 4.3, which we're pretty pumped about. Um, but anyway, I take that path and I pass it to the read. And if you remember, we were looking at the read. Uh, the way that works is that the path parameter and the value, so the value is going to come in with a path. Uh, and I think we can actually launch debug and just see this. Perfect. So you can see path comes in under the value. We pass that into the read stage. The read stage is going to supplant that here. So it's going to be default plus the path. And then it just returns the result in JSON, right? So that's the result of the read, which is reading the root of the line. So it's all the machines. And if we go up to MCP, ins MCP inspector and run it, it's the same thing, which sees what you get. Um, or I read a crusher, right? So I got a single, single machine back, but you get the idea. Okay, really simple tools. Um, the last one is set alarm. So I think uh, we might not cover that. This is actually writing back out to Ignition. I don't know if I have this one on. I do. So it's taking the machine name and a message parameter and what it's doing is it's browsing, finding the path, and it's going to write it back out where you see it, it passes. This one's a little more complex. Let's skip it. But it's just know that like tool design can get pretty complex in terms of ETL operations, like what you want to do behind the tool with a single data source, multi-data source. Um, but it's there. It's there for you to play with it. Uh, Cool. So we've created tools. We've verified them with MCP Inspector, meaning we've connected over the MCP protocol, found those tools, called them. Last step is go use an agent. This is the easy part, right? This is like you get to use LLMs to do the Agentic AI demo. You pass it a bunch of JSON data and it builds these beautiful dashboards that none of us validate, but they look cool. I'm a little tongue in cheek, but like this is this is the fun, easy part. This is where you get the payoff. So I'm using LibreChat. Again, in the class, I'm going to show you how to set this up so you can get to this environment. I've connected it to the Hybite MCP server so that when I go to add tools, I see that same tools list that was shown in MCP Inspector. What's cool about LibreChat is I can opt into which tools I want in the, um, in the context window. So it's just a layer of control, right? Some agents pull in all the tools, um, and you might not want that. So I pulled in, let's remove the set alarm tool just because we weren't going to demo that one. Uh, the read and the browse. And then I've created an agent, right? So an agent in uh, LibreChat via over here, you can just go to agents and kind of create your own. You name it, you give it a little bit of a little prompt and this could be pretty extensive for instructions. I'm going to use Gemini because I, I got burned by OpenAI in the MCP workshop the other day and I'm just bitter about it. I had some, some failures on the LLM side, which that's the world we're in. Um, they're not deterministic. And then I'm just going to import these two tools and I'm going to say, you see these demos all the time. Um, what machines are in my factory? And what the agent does is it passes that, it's pass, passes that request to the LLM. The LLM looks at its tool set, which is also passed with the request, and says, hey, I need to call a tool to execute that. It goes back to the agent, which is LibreChat, and then executes over the MCP protocol the tool call like we did in MCP inspector and if you look at it it's returning a list of all these and it's smart enough to know via just the text in that list like which one of these are machines versus tags uh, so now I have the address space of ignition right dynamically inside the context window of the agent and it can do some interesting things um, can you read the state of the crusher so now it's going to issue a read. 
it's going to pass in the crushing machine or the, the crusher path and out comes the result and what's really cool in high by two is i can go in and i can turn on replay for this um this pipeline which is going to track the activity in the pipeline i can go back and let's rerun that query And it did the same thing, but I start to have an audit trail of what happened. And you can imagine as you get a lot of agents and a lot of tooling and calling, like this is be going to become more and more important, right? But I can see um, the agent called me. The agent called in Folsom Line 1 Crusher. I went and did the read. This is what I returned. And that's a replay of the event that occurred on the pipeline when the MCP tool was called. So you'll, you'll see more of that and those lean into that because is agents scale down and become smaller work on smaller tool sets the the need to audit what the agents are doing what act data they're accessing when they fail why they fail becomes really uh important but anyway that's a whole separate topic of discussion um and that's it i mean really this is these are the demos right these are the really trivial demos but the power is when you get this concept in the hands of someone that a process engineer that works in this factory and understands this plant suddenly this agent can, can become much more focused on meaningful end goals and you can start to expose the tools that that agent needs to accomplish the goals the the general idea is like generalized tools are interesting but if you have an agent that's focused on let's say i mean let's just go look uh it's looking for alarms on the machine and maybe a few other process variables and it's optimized to look for those alarms and do some calculation or operation and then write back to notify somebody of a result like that agent doesn't need to browse the entire ignition server that agent needs access specifically to those alarm states on the machines and i could build a pipeline that targets that specifically that is a tool exposed only to that agent so i have the ability to build my own custom tools that improve agent performance they reduce the liability of the agent having access to my entire industrial system and in this case i'm doing that on top of a data source today at least that doesn't support mcp the beauty of this as well is if I tailor an agent, right, let's go back to the alarm agent, and it's very focused on that task, and then I go to the next plant, and that plant doesn't have ignition, and for whatever reason, who knows, they don't want it, they use factory talk, or they have some of their HMI or SCADA, well, I still need to, if I can keep that tool interface, so this is a really primitive interface, but I can keep a, a read call with a path, and then I can control that this reach, it reaches into factory talk view to read the data and then shapes it such the same way ignition did into the tool I can increase the reliability of the tool because the tool doesn't have to know the difference between factory talk view and ignition it just needs to know I make this call I get this data set back and I have reliability in my agent and that's how we scale agents um, anyway I'll get off my soapbox but I think it's really important over time for a you to be able to experiment with this technology B over time for you to control your tool access to your data streams uh, so that you can scale agents and more of that to come and like I said there will be a workshop on how to set up all of this infrastructure so that you can play around with high byte MCP tools or MCP tools that are coming on other products because I think it's really important that you get hands-on with all this stuff um, so keep uh, keep tabs out for that and this is how you enable today ignition with MCP tools